welcome back and many thanks for staying with us right here on the number one breakfast show in the country morning at NTV. Well, Julius Kapoepe couldn't have been more prompt. He's already here to discuss with us the, the proposal by the Ministry of Finance to tax the bank with drones. And if it's not right, how best can government, you know, resourceful plans locally pay less? Yes, without actually putting a dent in, you, in, the, in the pockets of Ugandans within this country. Julius Kapoepe is the program manager, Uganda Debt Network. There is a letter that was written on the 9th of February this very year by Patrick O'Kaili. He is the Deputy Tre uh, Secretary to the Treasury in the Ministry of Finance. He was directing or urging, actually seeking for advice from the Bank of Uganda Governor, Mr. Mutevide, to actually avail to him and the Ministry of Finance data on bank withdrawals from the last three financial years. Uh, and their argument was that they were concerned there is a tax on mobile money, 0.5% excise duty, but there is none on, you know, withdrawals in the banks, counter and also agency banking in that regard. So we should be, we are going to be having this conversation with Julius Kapwepe, the program manager. Very good morning. Thank you. All good right, uh, the ministry, like I hinted in my preamble, the Ministry of uh, Finance is in the middle of discussions to actually tax bank withdrawals. What yeah. do you make of this? Precisely about that letter that was uh, written by Mr. Uchairapa, the Minister of Finance in Uganda, was to do with consultation as part of the budget process for next financial year. And as such, he invited a number of stakeholders that were considered key in that respect. I saw you got a communications and commission in that room, telecom operators. Telecom companies. Yes. Yes. And precisely that's the, that's the genesis. Mm -hmm. But also the, the, of the other bit of the extension of the genesis is that the country is yearning to raise more money, more revenues, since we have had a sharp decline in our revenue yield for these obvious reasons that have been occasioned onto mm -hmm. our economy, the, the COVID being the obvious case. But also in the pre-existing conditions, there was a bit of, of hiccup in a number of areas. Mm. So that's the background of where that is coming mm. from. It's part of the consultation process about mm. the budget, and it is welcome. The challenge is... So if all goes according to plan and uh, they pass it, this proposal to tax bank withdrawals, let's talk about the ramification of, ha of having such a tax on bank withdrawals. That proposal, first of all, is not going to pass. We know that His Excellency President Museven will not accept it. He has always uh, <laughs> demonstrated that he's uh, a, 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 a listening president. I and, understand, and, understand Kapoe, but, but the then the same president, president has urged Ugandans so, to resource for money locally so that we can fund our own budget. Yes, let's, mm. let, let's exhaust this particular one. Yeah. First of all, it won't pass. Mm. It creates a moral hazard. Mm. You cannot tax somebody multiple times local service tax and many others mm. and so it is dead from the start mm. by saying that you, you you want tax cash withdrawals before covid you had about five million bank accounts mm. where we are now we have about 2.5 million bank accounts that are active by saying by facing a risk of multiple taxation you will definitely have those accounts come further down. People will keep their money further away. Cup so it, it, it's not viable. It won't happen you, anyway. You've talked, to, you've talked about it like it is a simple <laughs> issue. Before the lockdown, we had 5 million bank accounts. Yes. Now we have 2.5 million. Where are the yes. rest? Precisely. COVID has, uh, has caused several distortions to Ugandans at corporate, to Uganda at corporate level, but also at individual level, you and I. Mm. Some people don't even have what to put in those bank accounts anyway. So I think it, it is dead from the start, and I know that that will not happen. Mm. Yes. Remember, it has also a bit of genesis of financial year 1718 with the introduction of 0.5% mm. or tax for that matter mm. of mobile money withdrawals. Mm. If this passed today, it could also create room for even taxing other digital platforms, financial platforms Julius in the, Kapoe, future, Kapoe, in the being, coming financial Being in a country years. like Uganda, given the history that we've gone through, 
you can never say never. Anything can happen. We didn't think the OTT tax would come about. It is here. People will tell me, Romeo, I don't think these types of mobile money will go through because the people who use mobile money the most are in the informal sector. People yeah. who are struggling, people who have lesser money. But then it happened. So, and the president is also telling us we need to look for money locally because the donors are not willing to give us money mm. because of the corruption uh, allegations, because of uh, the human rights abuses and so mm. forth. So how can they resource for money or raise tax revenues locally with, without doing it with a lot of pain? How can they do it painlessly? It has taken a bit of more seriousness. Mm. If you looked at the proposals, or the outlook for the next financial year mm. budget, for instance. They are good prospects to the extent that they are implemented in real terms, mm. not in fewer and good speeches and the dancing magunju mm. and the arakara dance and then we, we walk back home <laughs> to business as usual. An example is there is a whole lot of pot potential and effort we put in coffee mm. uh, exports, coffee production locally, and productivity, but also exports. New markets like Italy and Spain, where we are now outcompeting the Vietnams of this, that hitherto were formidable forces. They were like the, the Manchester United of, of today and of the then days. <laughs> Sorry to the Arsenal guys. And so that opportunity can be utilized of strategic coffee exports. To China, to India, to, uh, to a bit of India, but more so to Europe. And there is, in spite of COVID, there is an opportunity. There is a whole mineral revenues spectrum that includes, includes curbing the illicit financial outflows. The inflows we can always discuss, but the illicit financial outflows associated with the mineral exploration and exportation. Let me just give one quick example. If you looked at Muko, which is in southwestern Uganda, between Chisoro and Kabari districts, Rwanda, Rwanda and Kabari districts, and Chisoro area generally, the prospects for iron ore, once we paid at attention as a country by real investment and having iron ore process out, we would conquer, as Uganda, the entire Great Lakes steel market. What an opportunity. So that is not going to take the faint-hearted. That is not going to be a quick gain, but a strategic mm. kind of But here is the problem, Julius Kapwepe. Government has been adamant to release information on the natural resources within this country. We do not know how much gold we are exporting. We do not know how much of these minerals we are exporting. Did you know that gold was the biggest export in Uganda in 2019? How much of that money was used to service the budget? So those are some yes. of the issues we are talking about. The, it seems like the minerals are here, but there is no <laughs> accountability. Gold is being thrown out of this country without any tax on the investors. What is happening? That, for instance, uh, that there is no tax on, 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 on mineral exportation is not a fact. The declaration or the under-declaration the, the, the under mm. thereof mm. is what we could discuss. Mm. The other bit is that if accountability in the mineral subsectors is the issue, precisely let's tackle that one. The other question may be how do we do with it? How do we reconcile the figures of declaration figures at the Bank of Uganda, for instance, vis-a-vis -vis what is declared at Uganda Revenue Authority in form of a tax? That can be looked at in more detail, and we, sh we plug any gaps mm. there that definitely are, when you look mm. at the government figures, mm. they, 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 they are gaps in that area. Mm. But the challenge then is not the mineral wealth that the country has, mm. but rather that the accountability that we would expect governments. And one the of the ways to go about yeah. that is mm. to publicly, regularly on radios, his Excellency mm. President Museven had given a declaration that every media house in Uganda should give 30 minutes to government programs and, and mm. let government officials come out and explain where these minerals are and who, how we could utilize them mm. and also how much progressively have we got out of these revenues. Mm. Of course, lastly, what you talked about on the oil being uh, um, gold, mm. being the leading export and now, mm. that has happened over the last four years. Mm. To date, mm. surpassing coffee, surpassing tourism, and but many of How come of we never areas. see some of this money come to service this budget and so forth? The money definitely services the budget in form of tax revenues, 
but also in the form of non-tax revenues. And if you notice, the tax revenues in, in Uganda are increasing, and so are the non-tax revenues, mm. including those contributed by the mineral subsector. Mm. So there are opportunities. We just need to be serious, mm. to, 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 to reflect seriousness, like I said earlier on. And this country will be booming. The other aspect yeah. quickly mm. is, uh, for instance, during COVID lockdown, mm. and the many speeches and counsel by His Excellency the President, there was where he talks about the real economy versus vulnerable mm. economy. Yes. That we can put agro-industrial capacity to use in Uganda, and we are able to have a whole spectrum of dealing away with unnecessary imports. Mm. Pharmaceutical uh, products, for instance, many of them can benefit from the, in, the input materials like cassava uh, products and many other products, mm. maize products that we have locally here at cereals, mm. and then offset the, the otherwise money that we lose to those other economies mm. unnecessarily. Mr. So Kabebe, big opportunities. Yeah. I was talking to one economist from Chambago University, Mr. Yeah. Mahirwe, and he was telling me uh, that gold investors that come to Uganda, when they get that gold and they take it to outside Uganda and export it, it's not taxed. Is it true? And he also told me that the artisanal miners who are getting that gold dust that is actually having no money, they are taxed. Yet the investor taking the big gold, big money, is not taxed. Don't you think that is where we are having the problem? We are overtaxing <laughs> the poor Ugandans. Yes, yes. As Uganda Debt Network and many other mm. actors, we've uh, done studies mm. that reflect our concerns of policy, revenue potential, nature in, amongst the artisanal miners mm. that you talk about. We also know that for a fact, the gold processing factories in Uganda, so far two of them, mm. are paying tax. But there are also categories of other mm. gold process exporters. Mm. So according to Bank of Uganda, tax is being paid, mm. certainly according to Uganda Revenue Authority. Mm. What we could contest, mm. and what some of us actually think that there are still mm. gaps, mm. is on the level of, the, of declaration. We seem to see under no declaration, yes. therefore, loss of revenue, tax and non-tax, to that extent. Okay, let's talk about tax collection uh, strategies that are not working. The mm. introduction of OTT after yeah. the 2016 election. <laughs> it seems to not be working a lot uh, as we speak. Is yeah. it worth maintaining? We gave counsel to government mm. through Minister of Finance and Parliament mm. that OTT itself was bound to have challenges. Its intentions being to curtail communication in Uganda, as was said by His Excellency the Pre President himself, was a bad idea. On ground, it has been confirmed that the yield that was expected so far has been up to about 20%. Do you want to maintain that, uh, that kind of tax? The answer is no. It should have gone yesterday, it should have never even have started in the first place. Why? The amount of revenue yield you expected could actually be collected from a number of areas. And, I, and I, I'll just give one particular example, which we've re-echoed again and again. Thanks to the NRM government for good investment in today a very good road network across the country. Anywhere, or about uh, uh, in West Night, uh, look at, at Moroto, yeah. look at the, the entire Moroto, Iriri and all those plots, look at, look at Soro, look at the organ areas, look at Rukunjiri, look at Mitiana, look at Kavoya, look at, uh, my God, look at uh, Mbale, up to Wakaka. Yeah. So now you do not need high fuel gasoline vehicles that you required for bad terrain then, mm. 10 years ago, 15 years ago certainly 30 years ago. That has all of, uh, altogether changed. Even the Maram roads in Uganda maintained by the district and, and those called community and access roads are in motorable condition than they were many years ago. Therefore, you can have a whole opportunity of saving billions in excess of 200 billions if you reconfigured 
your vehicle, government vehicles ownership and motorcycles ownership schemes. So why do you want to tax Ugandans with OTT, burden them, even when it is not working anyway, when there are all those huge opportunities? The people perhaps that would require huge gasoline vehicles could be the local government officials. But you are moving from Minister of Finance here in Kampala, going to your home, once in a while making a trip to Arua and to Agago, on a tarmac road, you do not need those vehicles any longer. Government has an opportunity. Deal with that, deal with wasteful expenditure areas, save money, and save the, let Ugandans enjoy their land. You have lots of recurrent spending. I hear you. Recurrent, if you looked at a budget of any of these government institutions, let it be NEMA, let it be Ministry of Finance itself, you can be alarmed. Julius Kepepe, the, the viewer would like to know, um, what are the ramifications of overtaxing Ugandans and are there any other tax collection strategies that could work? One of the, of, of the strategies is to utilize better what you have. Mm. And so the case of recurrent and capital expenditure that I'm talking about, mm. that you can slash Uganda's recurrent budgets by 80%, mm. except for a bit of Ministry of Education, mm. teachers and all of this, mm. and still live better as a country without any problem. Mm. And indeed, attempts underway, Operation Wealth uh, Creation and Council uh, of Afande Salim Sare mm. has been done. There is confirmation that you can do away with this scale of wasteful, recurrent expenditure, unwarranted, as one of the avenues. The other bit could be for government, again, not simply cross its legs and wait to go with the basket collecting money from Uganda in the form of tax and non-tax revenues. What has government on its side done in terms of strategic investment? That requires a policy shift where government comes in to invest or co-invest in certain areas for purposes of revenue. Housing Finance Bank, Uganda Telecom uh, 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 as an opportunity, Post Bank as an opportunity. A government must have a central role in financial management and financial All right, all right, Julius Kapepa, I'm afraid we've run out of time, but we cannot live without expounding on this very, very crucial aspect. The international community is freezing a lot of money that used to come to our coffers. Yeah, yeah. Now, how will that impact our economy and how can we reconcile the two? That also needs to be interrogated. Mm. If you looked at the external borrowing as a case, mm. that's what you're talking about, the international mm. community. The increasing pressure. How can we raise... There is the increasing pressure. Let's look at the money bit of it. And then we deduce that pressure. Yeah. It could also be just cosmetic. At projects level, we expect to get about 6.7 trillion shillings in the, next, in the next budget, in the next financial year. But also as budget support, we expect to get about 3.6 trillion shillings, right. shillings. So that tells you that that pressure we need to convert it into an opportunity mm. for trade justice. Mm. We do not have to keep on the pressure on the whims of other people Indeed. when we can do our own domestic strategy. Very insightful conversation <laughs> with Julius Kapwepe, the program manager, Uganda Dead Network. I couldn't have been more proud to have you speak to us on such great issues affecting the economy. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, you're still watching Morning at NTV. Yes, we are getting into another, another great conversation, the NSF Amendment Bill. Yes, what are the gains and the losses for midterm access? We'll be right back.